Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Eagle Public Library. My name is Anne, and this is our kids' class. Today, we're going to do something really cool. We are going to make some Play Doh that will last for days. I had to say it that way because this really does last, and it's a great Play Doh. It's really soft and it's really fun. So, it's not too difficult to do. Grab an adult or somebody who can help you a little bit with the stove. You're gonna need some help there probably, um, unless you are a big kid or an adult. Then you want a little bit of help near the hot stove, but otherwise, I think these are all ingredients most people would have around the house. So, let's get started on our super soft Play-Doh for days. Here we go. First thing we're gonna need, and I'm posting all the ingredients and the instructions on eaglepubliclibrary.org on the website, um, and you will see under our class resources, you'll see all the information for this one. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is add all of our dry ingredients together. So one of our dry ingredients is flour. We're gonna do 3 fourths cups of flour. And I have a fourth cup and a half cup. So that's what I'll use. I don't have a three fourth cup measure, but this will work. So we're gonna do our half cup first. Then you wanna get that leveled off on the top as best as you can with your flour. I'm using all purpose flour, which works great. So there's our half cup. Let's do a fourth. And if you remember doing your fractions and measuring, three fourths, or yeah, three fourths is a fourth and a half. So there we go. We have a fourth cup and a half cup to make our three fourths cup. So we've got our flour. Now here is the secret ingredient that makes this Play-Doh so soft and wonderful. It is a fourth of a cup of baby powder. So if you don't have any of that around, um, you can get it at the dollar store, get it um, you know, somewhere, hopefully grocery store. We want a fourth of a cup, so it's a good thing we had our fourth cup out. I'm gonna kind of carefully get this measured in. I don't want a bunch of that going up into the air. Okay, so there is our fourth cup of baby powder. And that kind of is our magic ingredient. It makes this just amazingly soft and fun to play with. So now we need our fourth cup again. We're gonna do a fourth cup of salt and I have some just plain salt here. Nothing special, so fourth of a cup of salt. Let's get that put in. And then we need two teaspoons, which is the little tea of cream of tartar and there's our teaspoon measure. So let's do two teaspoons, cream of tartar. Let's see if I can get that measured and leveled off. There's one. Okay, that looks good. We've got two teaspoons. And now here's another ingredient that's mostly not in Play-Dohs. Again, something that's gonna make this really soft. It's baby oil. So we want a tablespoon, that's the big T, the big tablespoon of baby oil. So let's add that. I'm going to add these really carefully. Actually, before I do that, remember I said we were going to mix all the dry ingredients together? Let's do that. Let's do that first because we want all that, the salt, the cream of tartar, the baby powder, and our flour kind of all mixed together. Nice. It's going to make it easier when we get this on the stove top. So let's get those all the dry ingredients, just kind of carefully get those blended in. Okay, I think we've got it all. Now let's add that big tablespoon of baby oil. Plus this smells really good. It feels nice on your hands too. Okay, there is our big tablespoon of baby oil. We also want a three-fourths cup again of water. So I brought some little jars of water over for us to pour. So we want a half cup again and a fourth cup to get to our three-fourths cup of water. Okay, there's a half. And now let's do our fourth cup. So we can get to three-fourths cups of water. I'm using the dry measuring 
cups for this. If you have a, um, a measuring cup for liquid measures, that's good. Um, this is kind of precise, but it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So I didn't worry about it. The dry measure will be fine. So now we're going to start mixing that together a little bit, getting this blended. And then I'm going to put a little bit of food coloring in there because I want this one to be purple, I think. I'm going to do purple. So I'm going to add my food coloring in now before I start putting it over the stove. All right, let's do, so I want purple and I didn't have a purple food coloring, but I have blue and I have red. So that should make a nice purple. If you have gel um, food coloring, that's even better because the gel won't get off onto your hands as much or onto your clothes or stain anything. Um, I don't have any of the gel food coloring, so I'm just using liquid food coloring. Just be careful. You don't want to get it all over. It does stain your hands a little bit when you're playing with this, so the gel is better if you have it. I don't today, so I'm going to just use this food coloring and just keep mixing here. And then I'm going to go put this over the stove, so I'm going to put us on hold here on our video for a minute. And we're going to cook this. What you want to do is cook it on um, low, just for a few minutes. So what you're going to stir it and keep watching it as you're cooking it. Um, watch it, keep stirring. And if your mixture looks a little dry or too dry or too hard to stir, you can put just a little bit more water in. Um, but usually the three-fourths cup is perfect. So you just keep kind of stirring, watching it over low. Cook it until it doesn't stick anymore to your fingers when you touch it. So if you kind of stick your finger in and it's not too sticky and doesn't come off all over your hands, um, then it's probably done. If it's too sticky, you can also add a little bit of flour. But you want to just keep cooking it just on that low heat. I'd say maybe five minutes. Um, until it's ready to go and it looks like it's going to be easy to knead and mix together. So I'm going to pause us just for a second and I'll be right back after I get this um, to the consistency that we want over, over low on the stove. Okay, we're back. I cooked the Play-Doh on low heat for about five minutes and I kept stirring the whole time and you can see it just kind of gets a little puffier. Um, it doesn't look as liquidy and to me it looked like it's going to be just right. It's kind of forming up into a glob here. So I'm going to get it all scooped up and I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my hands. Pour a little bit out on the tray here so that I can get it all put into a ball and bag it up. So the one thing you want to make sure you do with your Play-Doh after you've made it is get it into a Ziploc bag or some kind of airtight container and it will last um, at least a month. Mine um, that I had made earlier is probably four or five weeks old and I'll show you how that looks. I've kept them um, bagged up in a quart size bag and kind of got all the air out and this one is still amazing. It's soft and nice, has a great consistency, and it smells so good. So this one I made, yeah, probably about five weeks ago. It's still great. Just make sure you put it away and um, get it into an airtight container. So now let's get this purple blob of Play-Doh out of the pan and let's see how it does. Yeah, it, ha it does feel like it's going to be just about right. Sometimes just getting it out of there is a little bit interesting. I'm going to put some flour on my hands as I'm kind of forming this into a ball. And then it's nice and warm, um, but it, it won't burn you, I don't think. I had mine off the burner just for a minute or two, but it just has a nice warm, soft feel. I'm going to keep adding from the pan to this ball. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour. Here's where you can kind of play with that consistency. Um, I wouldn't really mess with it as you're cooking it, adding any flour or water. Um, the measurements are really good and really accurate. Just make sure you cook it for about five minutes and stir the whole time that you're cooking it. Yeah, this, even what's on the bottom here, is a great Play-Doh consistency. 
My purple turned out kind of funny. It's kind of like a grayish purple, like a elephant colored purple, which will be cool for some Play-Doh time. Let's see if I can get it all out of there. It does make a nice, it doesn't look like it when you're making it on the stove. It doesn't look like it's gonna make that much, but it does make a nice size ball of Play-Doh, um, enough to fill a quart sized Ziploc bag, which is about right. And that way you can kind of play with the different colors. This is just one batch from the recipe I have posted on our website. And this is just one batch. I did one batch at a time so I could have some different colors. Okay, I think I got it all out of the pan. And now it's time to just give it a little squish, add maybe just a little more flour in. It's feeling a little sticky, but not bad. And it seems like once you let it set up in the bag for a few minutes, um, then it's not sticky at all. It's back to a Play-Doh consistency. And maybe that's just letting it cool off too. Okay, this is feeling really good. Tiny bit sticky, but I think I'm gonna stop adding flour from my hands and get it into the bag and let it cool and kind of set up. And then I'll show you some of the other colors, but it does make a nice size blob of Play-Doh. You could probably make a double batch if you wanted to. Might be just a little hard to keep it stirred, um, but this actually turned out great. Add just a tiny bit more. Okay. This feels great, and it is so soft. It just got a really amazing feel to it. Different than like Play-Doh you buy in the store. This is just super duper soft. Um, I added some essential oil to some of the ones I made earlier. Oh, I should have grabbed a quart size. This one's a gallon size. But here is a pink one I made earlier. And I added a watermelon, a few drops of watermelon um, essential oil to this. And oh my gosh, it smells so good. This one, like I said, was about a month ago. And it still feels great. It's soft. It's just got a neat feel and it smells delicious. I think the baby oil and baby powder give it a good smell anyway, but then adding a few drops of essential oil if you want, mm, it makes it really fun to play with. So this one's ready to go and we have a nice consistency here, definitely Play-Doh consistency, just a little softer. And then as soon as the purple, my elephant purple, grayish purple kind of um, cools off, it's gonna be perfect. So I want you to go make some really super soft Play-Doh that'll last for days. Maybe just give you a month or two of fun Play-Doh time. If you make some, show me what you guys make and tell me how it turned out. So fun to be with you today. Have a great afternoon and go make some Play-Doh. See you next time. Bye-bye.